and ITVX. Now the latest ITV news in the time team with Helen Ford and Johnny Blair. stalking a schoolgirl through Hexham streets before stabbing her to death. The stark facts are that you made the decision to stab a 15-year-old girl to death with a knife all because your relationship with her had ended and you were jealous at the thought that she might see someone else. From controlling ex to callous killer, Holly's family warned that teenagers can be victims of coercive control. She didn't want her to go out with her friends. He needed to know where she was all the time, even if she was just at home. He wanted to know what she was doing. He was obsessed with her for a long time. He was obsessed with her. Definitely felt that if he couldn't have her, then nobody could. A deep-rooted problem. We examine the worrying scale of stalking in the northeast, with concerns that Holly's death may not be the last. Also tonight, we'll look ahead to all the weekend sport. And November has started as October finished. Very static, lots of clouds around. What does that mean, though, as we head into the weekend? Uh, the forecast later. First tonight to the life sentence for a teenage boy who stabbed his ex-girlfriend to death in an alleyway in a quiet Northumberland town. Logan McPhail, who was 16 at the time, stalked Holly Newton through the streets of Hexham for an hour before a frenzied attack where another boy was also injured. Tonight we have special reports on Holly's murder, as well as examining the alarming rates of stalking here in the North East. First though, to our correspondent Greg e. Steele, who's been following this case. And Greg, this has been a long and very painful road to justice. 644 days since the death of Holly Newton, but in that time, this case has revealed many new layers. It's revealed the dark nature of this teenage relationship. It's revealed the chilling way in which Logan McPhail followed Holly at a distance for almost an hour before eventually stabbing her, and it's revealed the pain of a family still crying out for change and crying over the loss of their little girl. This then is the full story of the murder of Holly Newton. Right, you're under arrest on suspicion of an assault. You do not have to say anything when you're on your defence. It's Friday evening and this 16-year-old has just been arrested for a sustained knife attack on his 15-year-old ex-girlfriend in an alleyway. But Logan McPhail doesn't seem to care coolly telling officers the victim's name and even suggesting what happened was her fault. Do you know her name? Holly Newton. Who? Holly Newton. Newton. Where's she from? She been too hard for doing Refusing to even say when he was born, he'd tell officers his mind had simply gone blank. What's your date of birth? You don't know. Stop being clever, right? You know how much blood you're in? What's your date of birth? Right. A knife's been recovered, wielded with such force it's bent the tip of the blade and snapped from the handle. McPhail says he'd only ever meant to hurt himself with it. As the teen is taken into custody, the girl he attacked is rushed to hospital. Despite the efforts of medical teams, Holly Newton dies in the emergency room. She'd simply gone into town with her friends after school, but now she'd never be coming home. The reaction from her school-aged killer is cold. He was just asked if is she dead. That was the, the response to, to being arrested for murder when he was charged. He made no reply when he was charged on the on the Sunday afternoon. It was mainly about him. McPhail hadn't met Holly and Hexham by accident. Starting more than 30 miles away in Gateshead, the former army cadet had carried out a covert operation of his own to find, follow 
and confronts his former girlfriend. Carrying the murder weapon in his school backpack, the teenager calmly caught two buses to where Holly went to school. As he arrived there, his behaviour turned more sinister, putting on a face mask and a black cap before eventually tracking down Holly and following her and her friends for almost an hour. Dressed in black, cameras capture him in various locations, keeping his distance. He's even overheard at one point lying about his whereabouts during a phone call. It is a pattern of prolonged, carefully thought out behaviour that would convince prosecutors MacPhail should stand trial, despite his claims he couldn't remember anything and arguments his learning difficulties made him unfit to face the courts. When Holly and her friends were walking around Hexham, um, the defendant was following them for around 45 minutes, but was careful to, to hide you know, his whereabouts. I think it was just clear to us um, that he did actually have the capacity to, to form the, the, the relevant level of intent. The killing had sent shockwaves across this rural market town, but one couple knew immediately who'd hurt Holly, because for them, it was the conclusion of a long arc of domestic abuse and coercive control over their little girl. <laughs> Holly and Logan had met at Army Cadets when she was aged around 13. Their on-off relationship lasted 18 months. They'd stayed at each other's homes, been away with her family, but the happy photographs couldn't conceal his troubling behaviour. He didn't like her to go out, he didn't want her to go out with her friends, he needed to know where she was all the time, even if she was just at home, he wanted to know what she was doing. We changed her passwords on all of her social media, um, so she was quite upset about that because she couldn't get into any of it. Um, there was just a lot of controlling behaviours going on. He was obsessed with her for a long time, he was obsessed with her, but I don't think we quite knew how obsessed until his behaviour changed. He definitely felt that if he couldn't have her, then nobody could. And he, and he said that to her at one point because she told me that said, well, loads of people say that though. So you just have to say okay then and kind of let it go. But what we didn't know is he meant it. Holly's family and friends raised these red flags and helped convince her to finish the relationship for good. But the boy from the cadets, who'd even talked about becoming a sniper, couldn't let go. McPhail's dark and determined attempts to get to his ex had actually started the night before her murder as he caught a bus this time more than 40 miles to Holly's hometown of Holt Whistle, arriving at around 8 o'clock at night in the quiet neighbourhood. Sat on swings at a park near her home, he began sending messages to friends and family of Holly's saying he wanted to get his PlayStation back. He asked one friend if she could help him trick Holly into seeing him before then turning his attention on her house. Miles from home, and in the middle of a cold January night, this was a teenager so determined to scheme his way into Holly's home that he even messaged her sibling to leave a window open for him. Luckily, he's very, very sensible, and he didn't let him in because we were in bed at that time. Um, and I, I knew nothing about it until later on. But yeah, I think if he'd somehow managed to get into the house, then it could have been a whole different story, but we could have been looking at maybe some one, more than one murder. McPhail's behaviour the night before had raised the alarm. Holly texted a friend around breakfast time the next morning, saying he's basically stalking me at this point. It was clear she feared he might be waiting for her after school that day. Her mother phoned the police who agreed to meet the family after class, but Holly wanted to go into town that night. She pleaded with her mother, saying MacPhail was just ruining everything for her. So the meeting was put off till later that night, and Holly left these school steps for what would turn out to be the last time. These, the final images of Holly after MacPhail had approached her and eventually enticed her into an alleyway where he'd launch his murderous attack. Almost two years after the murder, Logan MacPhail, for so long determined to try and deny full responsibility for what he'd done, was brought to court today and sentenced for Holly's murder. 
The sentence I pass is not intended as a measure of the value of Holly's life. That was beyond measure. Nor can it begin to put right what you have done. That is not possible. It cannot be undone. You were filled with resentment and jealousy, but still able to calculate where you could best attack her and able to wait until you got that opportunity. But the stark facts are that you made the decision to stab a 15-year-old girl to death with a knife which you were carrying unlawfully in a public place, having followed her in secret around town for an hour. All because your relationship with her had ended and you were jealous at the thought that she might see someone else. Holly died at the hands of a jealous and controlling ex-boyfriend. The crime isn't classed as domestic violence. It's recorded simply as knife crime because the victim was still a child. That's something her family says needs to change. I think there was probably a lot going on earlier that Holly didn't know was kind of not right, kind of a red flag, um, because she was so young. I think they need to realise that under 16s can be subject to this sort of behaviour. I think younger people need access to domestic abuse services um, if, if they feel they need it. Holly Newton's memory then, a clarion call that young love can be just as dangerous as the adult relationships, the law classes, as the real thing. Well, there were no tears or shouts from the public gallery as that sentence was passed and absolutely no reaction from Logan McPhail as he was led down to the cells. Holly Newton's mother left court around half an hour later, making no further comments. I did speak to Holly's grandfather, though, who told me the family are unhappy with that 17-year minimum jail term and that they're still broken at having to face life without Holly. She'll never ever get out. Put them in prison, leave them there. Don't let them out. The whole family sort of changed. No Christmas. Yeah, it's changed. Holly's mother says the whole family's heart stopped beating when Holly died, but there's a determination amongst them to help save other hearts now they're raising money for bleed kits and in addition they're pressing ahead with that call for these young relationships to officially be classed as domestic abuse and for more support to be given in schools to youngsters to help them spot the signs the red lights if you like of a dangerous relationship holly newton her mother says cannot be allowed to become just another statistic greg many thanks a significant factor in Holly's case was that she was stalked. Every year, the region's police forces investigate growing numbers of cases of women and girls who report being stalked or harassed by men or boys. Our correspondent, Rachel Bullock, has this special report on the scale of the issue and its devastating impact on women and girls. A warning that some of the details are distressing. to ask me why I've closed the curtains in my flat. It's so scary when he's watching my home. My stalker threatened to burn my house down. My stalker uploaded naked pictures of me onto adult sites. He keeps telling me I'm playing hard to get. My stalker has started following my daughter's social media. The thing is, he's really well respected and he's twisting everything to make me look paranoid. Like I'm the bad one. And he's with. the victim. These are the words of women and girls who have been or are being stalked. None would appear on camera for this report. All too afraid of their stalker and they have good reason women and girls are three times more likely to be stalked than men and they're also more likely to be victims here in the northeast last year 14.8 stalking and harassment cases per 1000 people were recorded in this region that's the second highest in the country above london the west midlands and the whole of wales jessica was one of those cases. Her stalker is now behind bars, but still we're protecting her identity.
He was turning up whenever I went out. I was on medication. I became socially isolated. It stopped me doing my job. You had to resort to putting cameras up. How desperate were you? I was desperate. I started a new relationship and I found <laughs> had been scraped into the paintwork of my car. I had spray paint on the windows. You lost years of your life because of this. I think until you're a victim you don't really understand. Say I'm going out to a restaurant or any sort of social situation, I'll always have my back to the wall because I don't know who's around me. I felt ashamed and it's not my shame and it's got to the point where I realised it's not my shame. I did nothing wrong. Jessica does feel that the police were too slow to respond to her early complaints and actually that's something that I've heard from many of the women and girls who I've spoken to for this report. A lot of them have also mentioned one of the most horrific cases of stalking in the country. It led to the murder of a young woman inside her own home here in Gateshead. I split out with my boyfriend about three months ago. Since then, I know that he's hacked into my Facebook and also my phone. Alice Ruggles reported months of relentless stalking to Northumbria police. It had left her too afraid to leave work alone. She locked every door and window in her home. But it wasn't enough. My butt needs covered in water in the bathroom. Is she breathing? I don't know. I'm trying to turn with them. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm trying, to... trying to take her. Oh. Alice! Alice! Oh my God, she's so cute. She's dead. No! Harry Dillon was in the army, stationed in Scotland. He was furious when Alice ended their three-month relationship. In October 2016, he drove to her home and murdered her. A previous girlfriend had already taken out a restraining order against him. Now he's serving life for Alice's murder. An independent case review found that Northumbria police had missed numerous chances to protect Alice. We just wouldn't have expected to happen to her. She was strong, confident. She didn't take nonsense from people. You learn to live with it. You, you don't get angry. I met Alice's parents in the Leicestershire village where they live and where Alice grew up. You know, in, in my head, I sort of thought that because somehow they're perhaps a bit weak and, and they're just so completely wrong and that it can be anybody and there was just nothing she could have done because the problem was his obsession. I've got to say, so I think it's really brave of you to say that previously you did have this idea that women who were victims of, of this type of offence were weak in some way because I think that is an held perception. Alice always felt that Dylan was a... A boyfriend who wouldn't go away and and she didn't really think so he was a stalker but until it was really too late and if she'd made that connection really early on i think things could have been very different it's why they launched the alice ruggles trust working with northumbria police to train officers to improve their response to stalking this year they also partnered with durham police going into schools to reach young people but I think we have to change the mindset of a generation that stalking is not just a bit of a joke, not how it's all too often portrayed in the media as something almost glamorous sometimes. No, it's serious. The police have got a really important job. They have to take too seriously. And that has improved an awful lot, but there's still a long, long way to go. DCI Neil Fuller is the lead officer in Durham Police's specialist stalking unit. Some of the cases he's investigated have left even him shocked. The worst case that we probably had was a lady who reported um, some suspicious activity at her, at her address. Uh, that progressed to being followed by a vehicle. She was diverted on her way home by some roadwork signs to a dead end. She had the fortitude to ring police at that point, get the registration number of the offender's vehicle. That was traced upon searching that person's house. Um, recovered articles from her home address. We'd had a set of keys cut for her, for her address. There was written material which would suggest that she was probably at risk of, of being significantly harmed and that his plans were that he was probably going to kill himself. He had things such as road signs and cones. He'd actually set up that 
broad work diversion as a way to entrap the victim? Durham police now use forensic devices in stalking cases. For example, a grease which can be smeared around windows or cars, leaving proof if a stalker has been tampering with property. Alice Ruggles, she was killed, and that's not uncommon across the country, which is why we've treated it as the serious crime that it deserves to be treated. We deal with things a lot differently to how we did 10 years ago, and things have moved on. Victims assured that unwanted attention is neither their fault nor their responsibility. Call the police and tell them about it. Don't wait. Don't think I'll wait and see if it carries on. Do something about it straight away. Anybody who is not accepting your no, they're stalking you. Words which are hoped will save lives. Rachel Bullock, ITV News. Discussed in the programme so far, you can find help and support on our website, itv.com forward slash timetees. And there's more on the sentencing of Logan McPhail for Holly Newton's murder in the ITV Evening News with Gamal. Coming up on the ITV Evening News, a 17-year-old who stalked and stabbed his ex-girlfriend to death is jailed for life. If he couldn't have him, then nobody could. And he, and he said that to her at one point because she told me. The death toll in flood hit Spain surpasses 200 as the country braces itself for more extreme weather over the weekend. And Manchester United confirm Ruben Amorim as their new head coach following Eric Ten Hag's sacking on Monday. Join me for those stories and more at 6.30. A 14-year-old boy has been arrested on suspicion of attempted murder in Northumberland. Police were called to Alexandra Road in Ashington at just before 7 o'clock this morning. A man in his 70s and a woman in her 60s were reported to have suffered injuries consistent with being caused by a bladed article. Both are in hospital, their conditions are stable, the 14-year-old boy is in police custody. A man has been arrested following a burglary at the County Durham home of England's cricketer Ben Stokes. A break-in was reported on the 17th of October when Stokes says his wife and two children were at home. A 32-year-old man from North Yorkshire was arrested overnight on suspicion of burglary. He has since been bailed while inquiries continue. On to sport and Newcastle United welcome Premier League title contenders Arsenal to St James's Park tomorrow. Simon has details of that and the rest of the weekend's action. The midweek Carabao Cup win over Chelsea was just the boost Eddie Howe's team needed after a difficult few weeks. But the hurdles get bigger. It's third-placed Arsenal at home in the Premier League tomorrow. One of the most consistent teams in the Premier League for the last couple of years. Um, very, very good team. Good, Very good manager. So the challenge for us is, is never easy. Championship leaders Sunderland are away to QPR and the Black Cats know that as the team at the top, they are there to be shot at. When you are on the top of the, of the table, you, the teams uh, try to, to win against the, the, the first, so it's a new challenge for them as well. Middlesbrough have shown flashes of promotion form, but ahead of Coventry at home tomorrow, Michael Carrick knows what needs to improve. It's consistency, you know, and, and, and producing the performances. Um, maybe I've done that, we turn into results, and that's the biggest thing. You can see the championship highlights tomorrow night at 10 o'clock on ITV4 and just before midnight on ITV1. It's FA Cup first round weekend for men and women. On the men's front, we're looking out for Scarborough, York City and Harrogate who play Wrexham on Sunday. We've loads of teams in the women's cup first round, including two who've never reached this stage before. Thornaby, who are at home to Liverpool Feds, and Washington, who host Hull City. Looking extremely forward to it. It's a big occasion for all involved, everybody involved in the club. As a team and as a club, it's our biggest achievement, not only as well for us, but as a community. There's action in the Women's Championship as well. Newcastle and Durham are playing away. Sunderland are at home to Bristol City. Away from football, the Falcons travel to Caldy on the Wirral in the Premiership Cup. And in basketball, the Eagles men finish their trophy qualifying group tonight against Manchester, then start the league season against Caledonia on Sunday. 
Well, Ross is here now, and I think we all enjoyed a rather lovely end to October weather-wise, not to mention beginning to November. Yeah, can you believe Halloween has been and gone already? <laughs> <laughs> the shocked by that is already yes. November. But it doesn't mean we've said goodbye to autumn. I have to say, it's still looking beautiful out there. The best is yet to come. Yeah, I think the colours are just starting to peak, really. We did lose a lot in the winds a couple of weeks ago, but look at that there, flying over Durham. It's been the perfect weather for getting the drone out over the last few days. Very calm end to October. October and start the month as well. We benefited also from some of the brighter conditions on offer. Nearly 17 degrees in Northumberland today. Very, very mild, mm -hmm. certainly for the 1st of November. We'd expect around 10. We'd expect a few overnight frosts at this time of year. So if you are out for fireworks, you may want to leave the woolly hat and gloves at home. When we look back at October, actually, it did come out pretty average, apart from that little blob over Northumberland, as she turned out to be a pretty wet month. But dry conditions for most as we head through the weekend. Let's take a look. Good visibility on the horizon. TUI sponsors ITV Time Team's weather. There's very little in the way of change for us as we make our way through the next few days. Subtle variations, lots of cloud around at times. That cloud brings some drizzles and patchy rain. We're seeing some of that as we head through this evening. But for the most part, it will stay dry and settled. Still areas of high pressure over the UK. So they're holding firm for now. There's the patchy rain overnight. It's just this cold front here. It's right in that middle of high pressure, though. So it is starting to disappear as we head overnight. But it does leave us with a real legacy of cloud. And with the high pressure and lighter breezes nothing really to move that cloud on although the wetter windier weather still for now being kept at bay so through this evening overnight there's the patchy rain there as it moves its way down towards the south we get the thicker cloud the murky conditions even down to lower levels sometimes poor visibility into those early hours but thanks to the cloud cover the winds coming off that mild direction temperatures still holding up at around 9 or 10 degrees, maybe a little bit fresher in those more sheltered rural spots, but again, it is mild for the time of year. Tomorrow morning then, if you're up first thing, quite murky, still bits of patchy rain and drizzle. As we make our way into the afternoon, the cloud is starting to lift. We are going to see occasional brighter breaks, small chance, a few sunny spells as well, and temperatures still up around 12 or 13 degrees. To Saturday, and as we make our way into Sunday, very much a case of spot the difference. You can really see the impact on that area of high pressure. So we get the lighter breezes and that stagnant feel to things. The cloud very, very unwilling to thin and break, just occasional brighter skies in the mix. As we head into the new week again, we're chasing that cloud around, feeling a little bit fresher with highs of around 10 degrees. Tui sponsors ITV Time Tees Weather. In a moment in national and international news with Kamal. I'll have your update at 10.30. Do join me if you can. Have a lovely weekend from us all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.